Did I grab it here? So graphing. So let's have a little look first at what is graphing and then a little bit into the implementation and then follow it up with looking at the end results. Let's get into it. So I've been using the Python as the platform, so this is going to be about graphing and using Python libraries. So what is gra graphing? So let's um, jump over these technical details here. Um, it's basically graphing is that you have um, different nodes and um, you have different edge definitions, which means there are interrelationships between these different nodes and you can use this to visualize um, in, in very different ways and very different data models uh, and you can have very many effects applied to this. So there's a, <laughs> a, a, a pretty much unlimited amount of different types of um, options to adjust. Uh, also a comment on the, the library that I'm using is just one of the many that are out there. Uh, um, it suited my use but there are uh, like very many different um, graphing um, libraries built on Python and other other languages also and, and even dedicated software. But I, I chose this one because this one was um, relatively simple to use. So let's have a look at it. So anyway, for this uh, experiment um, and implementation, I selected the PyVis um, library and, and one of the key reasons for it was it actually has quite extensive um, documentation. I know, as I said, that there are very many libraries out there. I, uh, I Probably this is not the one with the um, richest feature set, but um, it's at least relatively easy to understand. And, and as I said, it, it has relatively good documentation. So anyway, I wrote some Python code. I'll throw this on the GitHub site and I'll put the link in the description if you want to pick it up. Yourself. But first I made a top-level um, small application that uses the Pivus um, library to build a static network. So this is um, basically it's a, um, a hard-coded, uh, manually created structure of the top-level of, um, of the um, solution structure. And um, uh, just have a, as you see that it's, just, uh, and all these uh, visualization tools basically it's based on the same idea you have a bunch of nodes and then you have a bunch of edges which means the how they connect together so so what I did is I created um, nodes for all the main components and um, then I just added a bunch of edges to um, interconnect them and, and as you see this is uh, this is a good one to look at if you want to understand the basics of how does this um, <coughs> graphing work from a, from a simple perspective. So let's move on. So and as we we're talking about like source code analysis then I um, created another Python program that um, reads the assembler files, files and extracts the call structures. I mean this is not, um, it's not per perfect, I mean it, it misses some stuff but um, it, it gives you a very good um, overview um, of the how things are connected and how, how things interact. And um, this is the, this is um, dynamic, so this this is not hard coded. So it actually, lo as I said, it lo it loads in the f the the assembler file, and then it um, searches for certain um, uh, operands and um, extracts their information. Uh, then it builds the um, node, uh, or defines the nodes and then defines the edges. So. And um, one of the things with this is that, of course, this is the, you know, the, the amount you could expand this to extract more information or, or combine information into the existing graph is unlimited. So, so I had to actually stop um, development. So I thought I, I'll probably never, never make a YouTube video about this if I, if I continue iterating more and more ideas into this. So I thought I'd now I'll, I'll back off a bit and, 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 and just provide the basic call structure implementation because it's, um, as I said, uh, you, you could um, expand this uh, and it, it doesn't actually have to uh, be dedicated for uh, motor or assembler. You, you could very much adapt this to ARM assembler or Intel assembler, yeah, whatever other, if you were 
interested in pole structure. So anyway, as I said, I'll be including the Python implementations on GitHub, so I will won't be going through every single graph because I think probably few will fall asleep but I'll take a few of the more interesting ones uh, that have been created and this this is the first one to start with is the top level overview and um, the way this graph works is that it has a as you see <laughs> a gravity effect so you see how uh, you know, the, the ball that has the most connections has the, has the largest gravity effect so, and and uh, all all these effects are tunable. So uh, I've got just defaults here, but you you can actually activate a control panel, and ah, uh, you can go nuts. You can spend hours just uh, analyzing that. But uh, as you see here, we have all the um, different components of the um, Amos system, and then you see how they interact. So Amos includes is a very important part um, because it actually combines like all the different aspects. And then you see that we have some outliers here. So th this immediately gives you an idea, okay, how, uh, what does the actual main, what are the main structural components of AMOS basic from a programming perspective. And um, so let's um, have a look at this one. And um, this is the um, uh, AMOS Pro library. Immediately, you see you've got some outlier parts here, uh, and then you can see the main part here. And then if you zoom in a bit, then you can actually see these node points. Like, oh, that that looks like a node point. That looks like a like visually, directly, it shows you. So you don't have to actually go start analyzing the code and and, uh, and and trying to figure out where where these um, connection points are. So. So, for example, if we want to look at that one, then we can just zoom in, and then we say, "Aha! Aha! It's a some kind of a loop." I mean, the naming convention for the call structure when it gets to the lower levels, because this uh, the graphing contains uh, both local calls and um, uh, global calls and library calls, and the the um, you you could add sort of programmatic filters to, to see the different levels. And um, one of the problems was with the local calls is that the, the programmers of the AMOS system, they, they weren't consistent in um, naming the, um, having a naming convention for local assembler calls. So it's, it was not, uh, you'd have to add more advanced logic to, to say what's a uh, specifically a local call within a, within a same subgroup. But it, it probably doesn't matter that much. But when you get to a higher level, then you get um, a little bit longer names. And then you can, for example, aha, oh, we have an outlier here. What's that about? Okay, it's some G root and that kind of stuff. And here it seems to have an old structure that sticks out here. What's that to do with saying? And then, of course, you can go back to the uh, to the code base, and then you can search for this, and then you can actually dig in. You can see code comments, and then um, figure out the rest. So this is kind of useful just to have a to get a very quick <coughs> overview of how, uh, in this case, the Amos Pro library. And then we take the next one, and here's the compiler. Um, implementation as you see. Oh, we've got some loopity loops here. What are they about? Um, this is like call chains. Oh, wow. Uh, so it has call chains. So it immediately gives you this architectural overview, like how, uh, you know, how does this. And then, and then you get these flowers here. Oh, okay, what's that? Um, What's happening here? What's creating that? Aha! CL token. And of course, it's obvious when you're dealing with a compiler system that it, that it you know, very important part is a, like a spread of tokens. So it's analyzing all tokens. So you would expect to find that kind of a flower structure. Uh, and then again, now uh, what's this outlier here? It's sticking out here. And what's that to do with? Oh, it's some kind of a HXX. And then you could actually go into the code and then you can find out what that. Or what is it commented in? 
And as I said, the one could build on to the system, like you could, you could bring in uh, and even move to other graphing tools where you can actually add more metadata to the actual, um, to the, uh, actual uh, nodes. And here you see you've got quite a contentious amount of, like this, when it has this gravity effect, so then it's dynamically moving. But this also, like, immediately when you open this, you go, oh, oh, this is an extremely, like, active area down here, what's going on down here? So why is this jumping? Oh, there's a node here that seems to be very interconnected to everything, so what's that? Oh, instant jumps, okay. So there's something called instant jumps that seems to be connected to lots of things. So you, you, you know, you, I, uh, these are normal architectural questions, like, well, what, you know, what, what part of the system has the most impact? I mean, it's definitely not something out, out in the, out in the, you know, in the outer perimeter as a single node. It's obviously, it's, you know, things like this, and then um, these kind of placeholders. <laughs> And you you have to go between the co the code base, uh, looking at the code base, and then and, and then the graph to really appreciate. Well, it's interesting with these. I'm assuming these are cool graphs. It's doing a certain type of action. And then what do we have here? This was ah, this is the you see the Amos has this extension system. So this is the music module. So probably like its name says it handles music generation or something to do with music. And as you can see, that it has these different outlier components. Like this, is definitely. Uh -huh, there's one that seems to be kind of some kind of an entry point, and then it connects us into a whole thing. So, and that's called Muse 10. So then, uh -huh, so what's that? So then you can uh, immediately go into that node and start figuring out. Okay, how, how does that work? Next one, quite exotic, solid graph also. So, uh, this is the Amos library, so not the compiler library, the actual library for Amos itself. And here we see the again the structure, like what, what are outliers does it have? And then these things to where it's going to the suburbs of the application, so then you can actually say, oh, okay, what are the entry points here? Hmm, what's that? Uh, oh, something to do with rain? Rain? And anistos? And so again, it makes, uh, makes it for interest. Uh, much easier than actually just looking at the code. And then, ah, then here you see, oh, look, there's a flower structure down here, so what does that do? Why is there a flower? Oh, okay, there's something called Zoom, and oh wow, that seems to be connected to lots of stuff, so uh, Zoom must be very important when it's like as a train station coordinator, so then you can just go directly into the code and then you can say, okay, what the, uh, that's obviously a, a control point. And then we take the next one. Wow. Ain't that cool? And this was uh, Amos Pro Library. The main library for Amos Pro. I thought we already had that, didn't we? Or was it another library? Okay, no, it's Amos Pro itself, yeah, so then, then you have the um, Amos Pro library. But as you see, this also has, like, large chain um, call structures. So it's, like, probably doing one action through, a, like, processing it through very many different parts of the system. And then you can do this gravity adjust and stuff, and then you can, uh, like, grab a hold of something. Oh, but look, we have more flower sections here. Here you see we have coal trees. And then you can actually identify, okay, what are these coal trees for? I mean, what are, what are, because 
by looking at these most important call nodes then you basically you you isolate the larger parts of the architectural system and, and then of course there's nothing preventing you from making other graphs um, to further detail and then we have the last one and this was the editor <laughs> Well, the ed editor has a lot of conflicting, uh, you know, gravity functionality. It's a very tight connection. As you see, there's lots of um, competing nodes that are um, trying to own everything. So, so you can you can expect the editor to be a heck of a hard piece of uh, architecture to understand. But anyway, having having the graph, you you have the code. Then you can jump between them, and, uh, and then you can e you can like branch off and say, okay, I, I want to actually create more detail about this section here. So then you would actually make a filtered graph, where you you can't do it in in in, in this that I have with the implement, but you could add to the implementation where you say, okay, I, I I'm gonna I'm going to uh, pre-filter the node structure, and I'm gonna cut the um, I'm going to cut the edge. So we'll parse this part away, and then and then you have that as the channel. Yep, and um, like it was commented in one of the uh, literature, uh, the one I was writing about the Amos that they were looking at this once upon a time to re-architect to, to re so that they could move it to a new platform and <laughs> they gave up and as you see this is uh, quite, a, quite an extensive system 100% um, written in uh, Amiga Motorola dedicated assembler and um, probably, yeah, in those days you didn't have these graphing tools and stuff so probably if you weren't the guy who wrote the application or most of it then you, uh, you wouldn't have much hope to be able to, to comprehend it but anyway this uh, my idea with this is that it would give people an understanding, those that are interested in, in program architecture and, and Amos uh, Pro uh, as, a, as a source for, actually for implementations. I mean, what, what you could do now with this, uh, with these graphs is that you could actually, uh, uh, a little bit more easier to try and find um, specific implemented functionality for the Amiga and then you could uh, actually have a better option of extracting that specific functionality out of the Amos system and, and, and use it somewhere else like the for example the music implementation or the graphics implementation or you know certain um, handling of uh, the compiler part or or even the even the how the basic um, interpreter works so that, um, yeah. Or you could just say, I don't want to do this anything with this, but I'm interested in graphing in general. So then you could just take this as an example of how you um, how you create graphing, and then you could just run off and do your own project. <laughs> anyway, hope you enjoyed this one, and I'll see you in the next one.